you know, guys, we've got an integral of a trigonometric function here today, which is taken from a past exam. Now, the reason I'm doing this problem here today is twofold. Number one, because one of you guys have asked me to do the problem. And number two is because, really, this is a easy integral question dressed up as a difficult one. So if we, like, apply a few integral techniques to this particular problem, we can make it relatively simple for us to integrate. So let's go about doing that. To be perfectly honest, our toolbox is going to have to look like this. We've got our first integral law here, which is just the integral of a coefficient times the function is equal to that coefficient multiplied by the integral of the function. Also, if we have an integral of two distinct functions, either adding or subtracting from each other, we can do the integral of one function and then we can add or subtract the integral of the other function from it. So these two particular rules are going to be central to our solving this particular problem here. So to start with, guys, what we're going to do is we're going to use the first rule here to make this integral here, this 6 sine 5x on 2, look like our trigonometric identity. So the only difference between this and this is the fact that we have a 6 here and we have a 2 there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this rule here to take out a factor of 6, i.e. 3, and make it 3 times 2 sine of this. And then we'll have a trigonometric identity which is exactly the same as the one they give us in the hint. So let's get to it. We have, this is equal to 3 multiplied by the integral from 0 to pi over 2 times 2 sine of 5x on 2 cos of x on 2 dx. Cool. So now we have a identity which is exactly the same as the one in the hint. We have a 2 here, we have a sine, we have a cos, and then we have an a and a b. So here is our a, and here is our b. So from here, guys, what we're going to do is we're going to expand this trigonometric identity as the uh, hint, or I'm going to call it like the recipe, asks us to do. If we have sine of a cos of b, we're going to expand it to sine of a plus b plus sine of a minus b. So let's go about doing that. So this is going to equal 3 times the integral from 0 to pi on 2. Let's put a bracket here. We're going to have sine of a plus b. So it's going to be sine of 5x on 2 plus x on 2 plus sine of a take b. So 5x on 2 minus x on 2 dx. Now let's go about um, actually doing those um, fractions in our um, trigonometric ratios. So this is going to be equal to 3 multiplied by the integral of 0 to pi over 2. And then we'll bracket still sine of, this is going to be 6x on 2 or 3x plus 5x take x is 4x on 2, which is just 2x. Now, as you guys are probably um, can see already, that this particular um, integral here can be expanded. We can take the integral of both of these sine ratios individually. So we can then go, well, this is going to be equal to 3 times. Let's get a bracket going. So the first integral, we have integral of 0 to pi over 2 of sine of 3x dx plus integral from 0 to pi over 2, sine of 2x dx. And then, guys, we can start going about actually doing the integral, evaluating the integral. Okay, so hopefully everybody is aware that the integral of sine of x dx is equal to the negative cosine of x plus a constant. So with that information in mind, what we're going to do is we're going to evaluate this particular integral here. We'll take it to a new line. 
So we're going to still have this 3 out the front. We've got 3 multiplied. Let's have a bracket. So we've got the integral of sine of 3x dx is going to be equal to negative cosine of 3x on 3. Now that's going to be evaluated between 0 and pi over 2. And we're going to add that to the integral of sine of 2x dx, which is going to be negative cosine of 2x on 2. Again, evaluated between 0 and pi over 2. And because these are definite integrals, we don't need to put a constant on the end. Okay, so let's get around to evaluating this. I've chucked up this um, uh, screenshot of my uh, graphics calculator just so I can put the uh, negative cosine graph on the screen. So it makes it easier for you guys to sort of visualize how I'm going about actually uh, evaluating this particular integral. But in an exam, you can just quickly scribble down what you believe a negative cosine of x graph to look like. I think it's a good idea just like to make sure you don't make any silly mistakes. But again, that's up to you. So let's start this. With this particular um, evaluation, we're going to keep that 3 out the front. We've got 3 times. Now for this first one, we're going to evaluate it at pi over 2. So we have negative cosine of... 3 pi over 2, and that's all divided by 3. Subtract negative cosine of 0 over 3. Then we're going to add that to the negative cosine of 2 times pi over 2, so that's just going to be negative cosine of pi all over 2, minus the negative cosine of 0 over 2. Great. So, let's get around to the next part. So this has got equals 3 multiplied by. We have the negative cosine of 3 pi over 2. Well, this is 0 pi over 2 pi. 3 pi over 2 is here. So you can see that that Cosine of 3 pi over 2 is going to be 0 over 3, so that's just going to be 0. Now we have minus the negative cosine of 0 over 3, so the negative cosine of 0 is equal to negative 1. So that's going to be minus negative 1 over 3, or plus 1 over 3. Let's put that in a bracket. Then we're going to add to that negative cosine of pi, well, the negative cosine of pi is up here. So that's just going to be positive 1 over 2. Then we've got minus the negative cosine of 0, which is down here. So it's going to be minus negative 1 over 2, or plus 1 over 2. And from here, we have to go 3 multiplied by... We've got a third plus a half plus a half is just one, so which is equal to a third times by four over three, which is equal to four units squared. So that's it, guys. Like I said at the start, it's a relatively straightforward integral question that's just dressed up like a complicated one. So there are a few things that we just want to make sure that uh, you take away from this video. The first one is that we can use integration rules. Um, for example, the first rule that we used was if we've got a coefficient that's multiplying by our function that is to be integrated, we can remove the coefficient to the front of the integral and multiply the um, integrated function by that coefficient at the end. So this was the first thing that we did to make sure that what was being integrated looked like our trigonometric identity that we had in our hint up here. The second uh, rule that we needed to know was that if we have two functions which are being integrated, 
or, or two functions which are within the integral that are being added to or subtracted from each other, you can integrate both functions separately and then either add or subtract them after you've done the integrals, which is what we've done here. Once you've done that, guys, it's just a matter of not making a mistake with your uh, trigonometric ratios, making sure that when you've got a negative cosine of a particular value, we are flipping the cosine graph over. As you know, we probably our regular cosine graph looks a bit like this. It goes down, reaches negative one at some point, comes back, and then after the period, it starts back up at positive one. So the negative one goes down here. So it's important to either draw it or have a very good understanding of what the cosine or sine graph is doing whilst you're doing this. Because I would suggest to you guys that where most people are going to make their mistakes is in this part here. Going from this part to that part. That's where the silly errors would come in. So understanding what all of the ratios would be and making sure you put them in correctly is the most important part. But having said that, guys, thanks for watching the video. Thanks for getting to this point. If you did like it, make sure you hit subscribe. I put out new videos all the time. Um, if you've got any questions on this particular video or you've got any other videos you would like me to make, please leave them in the comments section below. But until next time, guys, just keep practicing, practicing, practicing. Keep banging your head against the wall. Eventually, it'll fall down. But most of all, enjoy your maths. Catch up.